This happened when I was a boy. I want to share my story now the internet has taken off. I'm not sure what else I can do, especially after all this time. Every year, the street I grew up on held a Halloween decoration competition. My dad took it very seriously. He probably still would if he hadn't retired to the coast five years ago. My mum passed away when I was small. Now you've got the context. Let's rewind 30 years. Can you take over? My dad asked me. His voice was breathy and his face bright red. We were pumping up an enormous inflatable monster, having already blown up and pegged down a seven-foot inflatable ghost. We'll beat him this year, my dad vowed as I took over the pump. I wasn't so sure. Mr Peterson, across the road, won every year. Today was the 2nd of October. Mr Peterson was the only other resident to have started building his display this early. So far, he had tarantulas and cobwebs in the windows. Fake, of course. At least the cobwebs were. The tarantulas were the result of taxidermy and looked terrifying. This was why Mr Peterson was unbeatable. What did a budget inflatable ghoul have on a once live spider imported from Australia? Cool, my little sister Olivia said in wonder when she came out the house and saw the ginormous inflatables. Do you think we'll win this year? My dad asked enthusiastically. No, Olivia replied with confidence. Dad tried not to look too disheartened as he glanced across the street at Mr Peterson, who was staggering out of his house carrying a scarecrow. The rivalry continued in the weeks leading up to Halloween. Dad carved pumpkin after pumpkin, enlisting us to help the minute we finished our homework. But no matter how many jack-o'-lanterns crowded our porch, Mr Peterson had more. Dad didn't understand it, considering Mr Peterson lived alone and had nobody to help him. But I suspected this was his advantage. He had taken an early retirement and had no children to look after, so he had no responsibilities to detract from his decorating time. Plus, he was wealthier than us and seemed content to blow his pension on Halloween decorations. Three days before Halloween, urns appeared on Mr Peterson's lawn. There must have been at least 20 of them. They looked cool around his gravestone decorations and impressive papier-mâché zombies. Can you help? Dad pleaded with Olivia as him and I struggled to wind fairy lights through the branches of our garden's tree. My nails are wet! Livy said, wiggling her fingers, which had bright pink tips. Dad sent us to the shop five minutes later to buy sweets for the trick-or-treaters that would come knocking on Halloween. Olivia glanced up at the windows and seeing no sign we were being watched, she pried the lid off one of the urns, stuck her hand in and pulled out grey dust. I can't believe he filled it. Nobody sees the inside, Livy said with a giggle except you, and it's probably to stop them blowing away, I replied. Then I noticed Livy's hand and I had to bite back a laugh. <laughs> There's dust stuck to your nails, I told her. Oh no, I thought they were dry, she moaned. When we got to the shop, she wandered over to the nail polish display. After 10 minutes of deliberation, she decided on black. We went to the counter to pay for the nail varnish and the mountain of Halloween goodies I had selected. Are you having a party? The lady behind the counter asked. She looked in her late 30s or early 40s. She had wild, dark, curly hair and nautical pumpkin earrings. No, it's for trick-or-treaters, I replied. I like your nails, Livy said in awe. She was gazing at the woman's hands. Her nails were navy blue with some kind of effect that gave a broken glass type pattern. She wore a wedding band and a silver ring decorated with a metal spider. She had a birthmark on the back of her hand below the spider ring. It's easy to do, the woman said. She came out from behind the counter and we followed her to the nail varnish display. You just apply this top coat after your main colour and it gives you this look. She held out a bottle of varnish that looked clear. Wow, how much is it? Livy asked. For you, it's on the house. She passed the bottle to Livy. Thank you, Livy said, beaming. 
She was nice, Livy said on the way home, and super into Halloween. Dad would like her. So would Mr Peaceson. Before we knew it, Halloween was upon us. I dressed as a mummy, covering myself from head to toe in bandages. Livy was a witch, and Dad was a vampire. I took Livy trick-or-treating, while Dad stayed behind to greet the competition judges when they arrived and to give sweets to the trick-or-treaters that would stop by our house. We visited the surrounding streets first, doing our own street last, so Mr Peterson's was the final house we called at. As always, his display was eerily realistic. I had no doubt he'd once again win the competition. Look at this, Livy said. She was in front of the scarecrow. It had a large carved pumpkin for a head. I could see another pair of eyes inside the eye holes of the pumpkin. They looked alarmingly human. Where do you think he bought these eyes? I asked Livy, but she was no longer beside me. She screamed. It sounded like a genuine cry of fear. My heart raced in panic. Livy was pointing at something on the porch. It was a severed hand with candle wicks protruding from the fingertips. A hand of glory. Livy was crying. It's not real, I assured her. It was unlike her to get so freaked out. We grew up making gruesome Halloween displays with Dad. Besides, it didn't look like an authentic hand of glory. It wasn't barmed or preserved properly. Look at the nails, she murmured. They were navy blue with the shattered glass effect. The same effect Livy had on her black nails. The rings were missing, but the birthmark was there, right below where the spider ring would have sat. I felt vomit rising in my throat. I thought there must be some mistake. Maybe the shop assistant was Mr. Peterson's friend and they made a replica of her hand. Still, I wanted to go home. I turned to find Livy tugging the pumpkin head off the scarecrow. I couldn't stop the shriek that left my mouth when I saw what was underneath, a severed human head. It wasn't the lovely shop assistant, it was male. Oi, what do you think you're doing? Mr. Peterson barked. Run! I told Livy. We didn't go home because we didn't want him to know who we were. Luckily, my bandages and Livy's witch mask concealed our identities. Peterson gave chase, but he was overweight and we were young and sprightly. We returned to our house through the back door so Mr. Peterson wouldn't see us. I peeked out my bedroom window. The hand and scarecrow were gone. I thought Dad wouldn't believe us, but he was concerned, if not entirely convinced. We went to the police. Surprisingly, they took us somewhat seriously. I was worried they'd shrug it off, insisting they must have been artificial decorations. They did warn us this might be the case, but Dad assured the officers that me and Olivia weren't the type to get worked up over nothing. The police later informed us that the shop assistant had been reported missing, but there was insufficient evidence that Mr Peterson knew her or was involved. The police had no idea who the bodiless man could have been. The experience haunts me to this day. There was nothing we could do to stop Peterson striking again. Nothing I could think of anyway. He moved away three years after that dreadful Halloween. I hope our police report would have at least flagged him as a suspect if people went missing around Halloween in his new area. I searched the internet every so often, but I've never found anything about him being arrested. I wish we had thought to take the hand and the head with us. Then the police could have run tests and confirmed they were real. Sometimes I wonder if they were props after all, but the birthmark on the hand was so distinctive. And if they were fake, why did Peterson hurry to remove them from his display after his run-in with us? Plus that poor woman was actually missing and still is to this day. I shudder to think that perhaps the dust in the urns was real as well. The dust Livy had stuck to her nails. I can only pray that if someone hearing this lives near a Mr. Peterson that builds elaborate Halloween displays, you take caution. Perhaps he's dead or in a nursing home. He must be in his 80s or 90s by now. Livy and I still talk about it sometimes. We try to enjoy Halloween with our own children, but the memories of that year taint the fun. We can only be thankful Peterson never knew we were in those costumes. Otherwise, I dread to think what would have happened.